Hi, my name is Julianne, and today I am going to be doing my Booktubeathon wrap up for 2018. This year it was really fun, and I did do some of the challenges. I did the first three challenges that they had, and then I just stopped. <laughs> some of the challenges sounded really good, but then I just didn't do them. Either I didn't have time, or I was a little bit lazy, to be honest, but next year I'm going to go for vlogging four days straight. That's my goal every year, just up it by one day and maybe eventually I'll vlog for the full seven days. But we'll see. This year was probably the worst reading year of of all the booktubeathons. Last year I got through I think the majority of them, but this year I read three full books, so that's a less than half, so definitely the worst year for me. I'm going to now go through all of the books that um, I did read and I did start two. I started two books, but I'll get into that whole reasoning in a moment. So let me start with day one. I let a coin toss decide which book I was going to read. I ended up reading Are You Shaw and The End of Time. This is the first book I believe in Rick Riordan's imprint and it's also a first book in a trilogy, I'm assuming. It is middle grade and it involves Indian uh, mythology which was very very interesting to read. I cannot pronounce anything. I'm not gonna attempt any names except for Are You Shot and I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. It was really really good honestly. In my humble opinion I do think it rivals Rick Ryden's PGAO universe. Like it's really really good. It has so many- like, there's definitely moments in here that just resonate with me coming from that whole universe. So there's just so many moments where you're just like, this feels like Percy Jackson, but not in like a plagiaristic type of way, but just kind of like it has the similar vibes, which makes sense since it is a required imprint, but has that really awesome blend of humor and seriousness, and it's very, very good. I did see a plot twist coming, one of the plot twists. Um, it just felt kind of obvious to me. Overall, this was an awesome, awesome book. So the next book I read was The Darkest Minds by Alexander Bracken. This is a reread. I decided to read it again because the movie was coming out that same week and it was just, it felt good to be back in this world, but also heartbreaking because of that ending. I just, ugh, it hurt. It hurt so badly to reread that ending. Um, but the movie, so this completed the challenge of being a, read and watch a book to movie adoption. I will make a full review about The Darkest Minds movie at some point, hopefully relatively soon and not in like two years because I have a tendency to procrastinate on videos. Sorry, but the movie was awesome. I think it's one of the best book to movie adoptions I've seen. Um, it's just like, you know, there's a lot that don't, that just isn't good. <laughs> So I think they did really awesome. There are definitely pros and cons to the movie. Um, there's definitely scenes that never happened but were so badass that I don't care. And then especially to the end, towards the end. It was definitely rushed in the beginning. I, I don't know if it's better to read the book first and then watch it or vice versa. But I think reading the book is better just so you have a better understanding because the beginning is so, so rushed. Like I was like, guys, you guys need to slow down, calm down a little bit. We barely get to see Thurman, we barely get to see the conditions of these camps, and it kind of bothers me because, like, seeing that really kind of explains the stakes of not wanting to be there. And then definitely I think Liam was the least like his character, because there's definitely moments where I was like, Liam wouldn't do that. I'm pretty sure Liam wouldn't act like that or say that. But yeah, it was, it was overall really good. I, I do recommend seeing it. I think it lived up to the book counterpart. Still, I would say the book is better, especially because the movie is not subtle in any slight slightest. Like, it's really not subtle at all. So I like that this book was at least more subtle with its messages and with the way the characters are and the way it reveals information. Because with the movie, they just throw everything at you so fast and it's like, you guys need to slow down with revealing all this information. Like. You know, there's certain things about Liam that you don't find out until the second book and they're already telling you within the first hour of the movie. <laughs> it's just like, calm down. But overall it's really good. I'm not trying to complain too much. Moving on to the next book I read. I decided that the next challenge I was going to do is the book with green on the cover, which would be The Call. Oh my god, this book was amazing. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. This book was 
so good. I need to read that sequel. I just cannot believe. Um, just I. Mm, I don't know words. Like this was insane. Like the just the characters, the world building. The world building was so beautiful. I mean, disturbing. It was very disturbing and disgusting, but like in that beautiful way. And I just I don't even have anything prepared. Like I don't know how to explain this book. It involves fairies who take children and it's called the call when you know they're called away and they have three minutes well in the fairy world it's like a day but in our world it's three minutes they have this day where they have to like try to survive and not get murdered and completely fucked up by the fairies and it's just insane I just I wanted more I want to see more of the fairy world it's really creepy like it's a really creepy story and if this ever because since we're talking you know, my mind is still on book-to-movie adaptions. This should never be turned into, like, a live-action movie, in my opinion. Like, I think this has to be an animation. Um, and they can do so much more with this a a in an animation type of way. I highly, highly recommend this. I, I need time to, you know, sort through my thoughts. But it was really, really good. <laughs> um, and so compelling. Like, you know, I really didn't want to stop. So those were the only three books that I fully completed but i did start meg oh boy this book this book is i'm almost done it's so so good this is the one that completes the um wear a hat while reading the book challenge so i did make a hat is this um so i made this hat because i don't actually own a hat but you'll quickly see that there's a problem with this hat and it's like it doesn't fit on my head like so but luckily, I realized that I do have a hat, my senior crown. <laughs> so uh, I still have this for some reason. I, leave, I just put it on my bookshelf at the top. This, as you can see, is all I have left. This book, um, if you haven't seen the trailers, it's about a Megalodon. Okay, if you're into sci-fi shark movies, I don't think I need to say any more <laughs> than that. Personally. I love sci-fi shark movies, so as soon as I saw that trailer, as soon as I saw that shark, the giant shark, I was like, I'm in. But I actually read the summary for this book, and I'm like, man, this just sounds like it would be a sci-fi shark movie. And then just a little bit later, I see the trailer for The Meg, and I was like, oh, I was right. I was right. And it just, it's a really, really cool book. I'm going to actually put this down for a second. I was like, I'm so ready for this movie. I'm so ready to read the book. And the book, I feel like it is like a sci-fi shark movie, but you know, not exactly the same. Like it's one of those sci-fi shark movies that are good, like genuinely good. Like um, I would say Deep Blue Sea good. So Meg, in my, in my opinion, I feel like no one else is gonna say this, but Meg is like Jurassic Park, but with a Megalodon. Like, it's written in that type of scientific way. Like, if you read Jurassic Park, you know what I'm talking about. Where it's written very scientifically, like, this is how they cloned the dinosaurs. This is how a Megalodon could have survived without anyone else noticing. And it actually kind of makes sense. Like, from my limited knowledge of sharks and Megalodons, it makes sense. I mean, the one part that, like, I can get behind this Megalodon having survived underneath the ocean for so long. But I cannot get behind that this Megalodon can smell human blood. If great white sharks have not evolved to be able to smell human blood, a Megalodon definitely did not evolve to smell human blood. Overall, it's a really, really fun book. It's what you can expect from a sci-fi shark movie. You got your sharks. You got people to eat, eaten alive by sharks. It's so much fun. I love it. And the one thing that it has going for it that I am so, so happy about is we get a points of view from the Megalodon. We get to see what the shark is kind of sort of thinking, and I love it. Like, my favorite character is this Megalodon, and I don't care about the humans, okay? I just want, if the entire book was from the Megalodon's point of view, I'd be happy. Like, just reading from the point of view of Megalodon is so much fun, in my opinion. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I'm just not gonna say any more about the book. It's awesome, and I can't wait to finish it, can't wait to see the movie. And I'll try to make a separate review about it, hopefully, again, not like five years late, like I normally do with a lot of things. Um, I'll try to make it that video as soon as possible. Next book that I started, but obviously didn't finish, 
is a long way down to, wait, yeah, a long way to a small angry planet. I only started it because I wanted something to read while I wasn't at home and that there was no way I was going to bring Meg and read it while wearing my senior crown in public. Like, I'm not, I was not doing that, so I just brought this. It was supposed to complete the seven books um, portion of, of uh, the challenges and stuff. It's science fiction. I love science fiction, <laughs> you guys can't tell. And um, I didn't finish it. So far it's good. Once I finish it, I'll actually talk about it, but there's not much to talk about right now at this moment. And the two books that I haven't even gotten to, let me tell you. So, one of them was supposed to complete two challenges, uh, Pretty Spine and Something You Wanted to Do. And that was The Outcast. This had a pretty spine, and people did magic, which is something I want to do, because that's cool. I really am hyped to read this book, and I never got to it. Uh, I was going to actually have it as the last book I read, so it was the most fresh on my mind, so I can make a video about it, because I need to make a video about it. I will get to this as soon as I can, but I am hyped for this book. I love the Summoner series, it's so so good. And the other book that I didn't get to was The Haunting of Eliza Bullcray by Chris Wooding. I try to read a Chris Wooding book every book to with on, so I'm still going to reread this book, you know, got to keep a tradition some way. And I'm excited to reread this book because I love Chris Wooding. He's like one of my favorite authors of all time. He's up there with Rick Ryden. So I will get to this as soon as possible. So that's it. That's everything that I read and did not read for book two with on. Hope you guys had an awesome book two with on. I really wanted that certificate, but whatever. So thank you for watching. I will see you next time and happy reading. Bye.